Blush Trucker filmed before a live studio audience. That's Rusty, the world famous meatball dog. Hey, I had a suggestion from uh, Phil in uh, New Mexico, I think he's in Albuquerque, saying uh, he liked the you know, inside tour of my truck. If you haven't seen that one, go to um, Tiny Houses Trucker Edition. Scroll down, it's way down there. I did it months ago, but it has a whole tour of the inside of the truck. But he said, uh, I'd like to see a tour of the outside of the truck. So, uh, right now I'm parked in a warehouse here in, uh, well, where is it? Somewhere in New Jersey. Monroe Township, New Jersey, waiting uh, for my appointment time to get into a dock, picking up a whole bunch of dog stuff at this and two other locations, going to Chewy.com. If you have pets, maybe you're familiar with that in Indiana. So, uh, got some time to kill, so I thought, well, let's do the uh, tour of the outside of the truck. Kind of show you all the pieces and parts, baby. Thank you. Right, Rusty? You can see that he's like falling asleep sitting up here. Well, I've done some other videos with shots of my truck, and of course there's, you can see Rusty up in the window. Let me zoom in. You can see him up there barking his head off. Hey, Rusty. He always has to watch what I'm doing when I'm out here. Anyway, so this is the Freightliner Coronado 2016. It's a glider kit, which means uh, it's a new, it was a new truck in 2016, but the engine is rebuilt. It's a 1999 Detroit Series 60 12.7 liter. Here's a straight on shot of the front of the truck. Sun's kind of up behind me, so I'm not sure if this is going to be good video or not. And you see I've got a grill guard in front here. This is made by X-Guard. They're out of Des Moines, Iowa. And I even bought their license plate hanger that fits on there very nicely. But uh, mainly you'd buy this for hoping, you know, if you hit an animal or something, it would bounce them off. Uh, funny thing is, I haven't had to use it for animals. Had somebody back into me once. I've got a video all about that. United Van Lines backing into me at a TA in Troy, Illinois. Now to get into the engine, you got straps on each side here for the hood. So oh, this is an air cleaner, by the way. Uh, this sucks the air in and goes up around through vented parts of the hood and puts it down through my in engine air filter so that takes the air before it goes into the engine. Cleans it up a little bit. All right, so to open these, you just do that on each side. There's another air cleaner here on this side. We will open up this one. Then I'll open up the X-Guard. That's what it looks like with the X-Guard down in front. Of course, I've got my teeth bug grill cover there. I like the teeth. That makes it look fun. All right, here's what it looks underneath the hood. This is on the passenger side. All right. This thing right here, that is where you change the engine air filter. It's circular. There's the intake for it right there. And if you look down, you can see the air filter inside. Screen covering the or paper type air filter. And right here, this is where the cabin air filter is for the, all the air coming in through the cabin. And you can, maybe you can see it over there, the intake. That brings all the fresh air in to the truck. These big things here are air-to-air -air boots. That's coming from my turbo, which is right there. The air intake goes through the turbo, through these piping, around through the uh, CAC, also known as charge air cooler which is in front of the radiator right there. You can see inside the fan area, maybe. And then also, got our alternator there. There's the various belts. Big fan belt. All right, basically engine parts. You got coolant hoses back there. Lots of hoses, lots of wires. And like I say, the fan in the front. When we go around to the other side, not as much direct sun on this side, probably be able to see a little better. Coming out of the charge air cooler, here's our other boot leading to the intake manifold going into the engine that's bringing the air into the engine. See up there is this Detroit Diesel Series 60 12.7 liter. Down here is our compressor, gives us all the compressed air we need for the, all the engine and everything. Lots of airlines coming up right there to this intake air manifold. Right up here, the coolant tank. And you can see right now it's between cold 
minimum and cold maximum. Could probably use a little bit more right there. That's our uh, <laughs> I'm blanking. Yeah, steering, uh, auto steering, automated steering, uh, you know, assist reservoir right there. Because there's our steer pole coming up from our steering wheel. And then right there, washer fluid, window washer fluid right there. We've got a big tank in this thing, so we use a lot of it. This is the spin-off Tavco fuel filter. It's the only fuel filter I have on this truck. And right back down there, you can see, there's my starter. Had that one replaced last December, so it's still fairly new. All right, so that's basically looking at the engine. You can see that little circular thing up there. That's the uh, from the air intakes that I showed you on each side of the engine of the hood. That's where it comes back out and meets up with my air filter right there once the hood is closed. So there's looking at the front with the hood open. Of course, I omitted while we're here. Steer shocks, here's the brake can for my steer axle brakes, tie rod, and so forth. Here's your steering, I can't remember the name of that thing, it leads to the tie rod, and so forth. So there you go, it's inside the engine. Okay, got our old button back up as we say. There's my step to get up into the door. And that little box there underneath, inside that box, that's where my batteries are. You got four of them in there in this truck. Four large size batteries. That's how many you need. Of course, there's the smokestack on this side, exhaust stack. This is a little box door. I can open it for you. I keep lots of things in there hub oil. Orange clean wire, bungee cords, load straps, a little bit of everything goes in there. Stuff I might need. Got my DOT permits there. Now we're looking at the back of the cab. There's the very top. There's the lower section. You can see my left fuel tank. Each fuel tank 150 gallons, by the way. There's a spare tire carrier rack that my wife got for me for Christmas a couple of Christmases ago. Great spare tire carrier. You see, I carry a fully inflated on a wheel spare tire. I keep a trailer tire on there because you're always going to blow those the most. So it's ready to go. So if I have to do a road call, all I got to pay is somebody to spin off the other one and spin the new one on. Because I'll have one and I can put the, in the bad one up here. There are the uh, air and electric lines leading from the tractor to the trailer. So they loop down and the air going to the trailer to uh, pump up the airbags and uh, also if you cut air off to the trailer on that red side it automatically puts on the brakes on the trailer. The blue line is your service brakes on the trailer so you have service brakes when you press your press your brake pedal and those are connected way back there kind of hard to see oh, there they are behind my spare tire carrier steps getting up to my what we call the catwalk so I can stand up there and do a pair of things if I need to. This little unit up here this is the fan for the uh, condenser for my APU. APU stands for automatic or uh, auxiliary I'm sorry there goes a the truck. It stands for auxiliary power unit so I don't have to run the main engine to have heat and air conditioning that's part of the air conditioner part of it right there. And down here, my quarter fenders is what they are. These are on the top rubber part ripped off of both of these. It's still a little bit on the other side, I'll show you that. Now, my box I showed you on the other side, which is also a step. On the driver's side, it has the batteries. This side is just open. I use it to put some extra fluids in and stuff that I don't want up underneath my bunk. Because like on this, the other side, there is a side box door here that I keep extra supplies. I keep my tools in there. And I'll show you. You have to open the door to get to the handle to open those little side boxes. So I sh thought I'd show you. Of course, here's where Rusty always sits while I'm driving. Kind of crams himself here. There's another pet bed. And there's, of course, one of his little toys, his little bee, on the passenger side. Here's the handle you pull to open this side box door. 
And then here, yes, you can see I have my tool bag in there. I've got various other tools. Here's my little bottle jack. And I'll stuff extra Kleenex and other supplies in there as well because I've got a little bit of extra room. Now, I mentioned the APU unit earlier, and that's what this is, hanging off the frame of the truck. This is the Carrier Comfort Pro Auxiliary Power Unit. There's a small engine inside there, kind of a little bit bigger than a lawnmower size engine. And so that runs and only uses a tenth of a gallon of diesel an hour, where the big truck engine uses a gallon of diesel an hour. So that's how I can save money while parked to run my heat and air conditioner. The rest of that system's underneath the bunk, which is hard to show where the actual air conditioner unit is, but here's the engine part of it. And like I showed before, there's the fan condenser up there. And again, another 150 gallon fuel tank on this side of the truck. Now we do have two drive axles on these trucks. Two wheels on each side. Well, it's a total of eight. 910 including the two steer tires and of course another set of tandem axles back on the trailer that's where you get your 18 wheeler uh, line front oh this down here by the way it's the only thing that's an airbag suspension airbag is what we call it there's a shock up there behind it between the shock and the airbag that's our suspension on these things that's the fifth wheel that's how you hook the uh, tractor to the trailer see up there, uh, it sli you slide your king pin in between that spot on the fifth wheel plate and it locks into place. That's how we haul the trailers down the road. Now the rest of it would involve the trailer, so we might as well show you that. I've shown this in other videos before too. I've got the skirts on there. As you can see, those uh, help supposedly to improve fuel economy. I haven't noticed a big difference. Uh, the thing I don't like about them, if you've got a big crosswind, it does tend to blow you around a little bit more. But there's my trailer, it's a Hyundai, and I'll show you the back, because I'm empty right now. These some lights I had to replace not too long ago, my trailer side lights and also marker lights. They flash when the turn signal's on. Okay, this on the trailer, this handle right there, that is the handle to release these pins. You see that pin up there? All right, and there's all these holes. These tandems, these tandem axles, can slide forward and back. Right now, they're in about the forwardmost position but they can slide back further on the trailer. See where they are right now? And there's the back. They can slide more towards the back. That's how we love or get the weight even on these things. Okay, here's the rear of my trailer. Again, the Hyundai. I've got watch clutch truck on YouTube signs I'm gonna put on here once I get them in. And to open the doors, flip this little guy up. Pop it open. Push it. Sometimes it doesn't want to pop all the way open. All right, there we go. And now you can see inside my trailer. Okay, I had to redo the audio on this because I had the camera turned around, the mics turned around, and it was echoing so bad you couldn't hear what I was saying. But I'm showing you the LED lights up there on the ceiling, which the loaders and unloaders love, and I love when I have to get in there at night and clean it out. These are my E-Tracks on the wall. You can attach straps to those E-Tracks to hold your load in place. They're cargo securement straps is what they are, and those are great. Here's the floor. It is a wood floor on these dry van trailers, except for the very back right there, which is metal. That's where the dock plates come down. And I have a ladder installed on my door there because it's my trailer and I can, and I uh, fell out of this thing too many times with ice in the winter months, so I'm an older guy too. I want a ladder. Thank you. And when you open the doors, I have this little piece of chain uh, hanging down here with this, and I'll show you where that goes. That's to hold the door open when they're open. And swing your way around here. You see this little hook? Right down there. This goes over that. All right. You can see in there, see that? It holds that door open. So now my doors are open, and I'm just ready, waiting for them to call me and say, they're going to put me in a door and then they can get my trailer loaded. We got one of the most important parts of the trailer, the landing gear, right, right here. This is how, if we need to drop our trailer and leave it, this is what we do. This is uh, little legs will crank down. That's what this arm is. To crank the legs down and I can demonstrate. Alright. So as I crank, you can see 
the leg is indeed going down. All right, that's how that works. So there you go, an overview look of the truck and trailer on the outside. So like I say, I know I've done other videos that shows uh, parts of the outside of the trailer, but yeah, a fella in, uh, in New Mexico said, let's just get a uh, big tour of the whole outside. So there you go. All right, and if you want to see a whole tour of the inside of the truck, like I say, go to my uh, Tiny Houses Trucker Edition video. Uh, you can just Google that, I'm sure, to, or, or you know, go into the YouTube search and find it. Because uh, I did that like months and months ago, so it's way down there on the list. And it may not show up in the little pack of videos that always shows you when you come to the channel. But if you search for it, you will find it, and you can get the whole tour of the inside. You can see where my bed is, my, my whole kitchen, living room. With, <laughs> there ain't a lot of room in here. It's all right back here, so that's kind of the big joke. All right, so go check out that video. I hope you enjoyed this one with a kind of a quick tour, an overall quick tour of the whole outside of the truck and trailer. So here it is, uh, Tuesday, the 28th of uh, July. Oh, here's a look, got off my new watch. I do have a video all about this too. Uh, not too long ago, my new Timex uh, Command Shock, I believe it is. I'm liking the watch a lot. Anyway, um, another big heat index warning today for the Northeast. Yeah, heat index is uh, above 100 degrees again, they can say today. It's only uh, 9.15 in the morning. It's already getting real hot out there. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, we'd like to kick that up if I could. Uh, please uh, comment. I do get to your comments. A good example. This video is all because Phil in New Mexico commented and said he'd like to see a video of the outside of the truck. So, you're welcome. All right, so I've got some others that other people have uh, suggested I still want to get to. They're all about having a dog in the truck. That's just going to be more involved, and so I haven't gotten to it yet. I'm sorry, but I will get to that. So please comment. Uh, please like. Please ring the bell for notification. As always, sniff that magic YouTube fairy dust. Clutch out.